fellas? If there was one film to draw us back into the world of new film, uh, you know, movie reviews, it had to be Roadhouse, the remake. Roadhouse. The reimagined. <laughs> 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 Council Pop. Let's not keep people in suspense, Keith. This is uh, an episode of Council Pop, so we're starting 60 seconds on the clock. Hot take. Oh shit. I forgot we do this. We, this we do do this for the Council Pop. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Do you, I'd rather you go first. Okay. Okay, I'll go first. Six seconds on the clock. I think uh, <laughs> this movie is, I mean, this movie is not good. It's, it's not a good movie. Uh, there, there's some enjoyment to be had. I think the main things I want to talk about this movie, I want to talk about the movie itself, which is bad. Uh, and also, there's a lot to talk about around the film. The, the nature of uh, streaming and the way this film was released and uh, some of the issues I have with this film from a technical film standpoint are a couple of the worst things I've seen in memory. Uh, just in terms, very technically speaking. So if you enjoyed it, I, I get like enjoying some of it. I enjoyed some of it. I enjoyed some of it. Like I get it, but like, it's bad. It, this is a very poorly made film. And the more you think about it, the more I think we should all be insulted because I, I, I do feel insulted. And like someone's trying to pull the wool over my eyes a little bit here or my fur over my eyes. Keith? <laughs> <laughs> it's better. I you you veer. I think you missed the point of our sixty second recap. Like, just what do you think? Not like what everyone may possibly think. Just yes or no. Go. I gotta speak for everybody, Keith. <laughs> sixty seconds right. on the clock. Do better, you piece of shit. <laughs> May, uh, <laughs> do better, you piece of shit. Should be. Yeah. Is my life's motto. Put it on your tombstone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should have done better, you piece of shit. Uh, <clears throat> six seconds on the clock. I both uh, love this movie and truly hate this movie. I think it is, I don't want to say the best of both worlds. It's the worst of both worlds is the, is the best way maybe I can explain it. It, I think it sets, it. <laughs> I think it tries, I feel somewhat like I felt about The Gray Man. Mm. And with the, the, this is going to be dicey. But I stand by what I said about The Gray Man. I stand by this. I, I think modern day, today, what filmmaking is, what cinema is at sort of that pop culture level, like this is what you're going to get. And for that, it's like, okay, fun. Okay, like a good time. And we're having fun. And we're just meant to like enjoy it for what it is. And at that version, it's okay. But like this movie as a, as a whole is 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 really it's bad. It's like really bad. It's so it's really I'm gonna sound like I'm bipolar this whole episode. Like it's I, I'm gonna praise it and I'm gonna shit on it, and I feel like both can exist in this world. Sure, sure. I'll always disagree with your your notion of like well, just you gotta judge it by today's standards. I just I just disagree with that. But uh, but why? I don't know. Today it, is where we live, I and know, today but we've is gotten here. why films are getting made, or how films are getting made, is based on that. Yeah, we've gotten here because of that attitude, though, like that defeatist attitude, like ah, my, this is my his, attitude. Yeah, because of you <laughs> specifically. We the yes. cinema and films now are <laughs> terrible uh, because people are just like ah, that's what it is. Ah, that's the way they all are. No one really tries. Quit taking it so seriously. It's just movies. Like, it's just a stupid action movie. Like, those kind of sentiments are what lead us to this. So that's, I take issue with that. But I don't know where to start here, Keith, because I want to, I, I think I want to keep it specific to the film before I really, we really start opening it up to Amazon and streaming and all the yeah, circumstance, yeah. Oh, sure. circumstances around it. Do you want to start with the... Start with the good things, because that's a shorter list for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Do you want to? Do you want to start, or do you want me to start? I'll just say a couple of things. A couple of things I, I really liked about it is Jake Gyllenhaal is very likable, as he usually is. He is a he is a very good actor. He does a great job. He he gives this movie a lot of credibility when he's on screen, and his performance elevates 
what is a truly dog shit script. Like, uh, I want to get there. I can't, can't wait to talk about the script. Uh, but his <laughs> performance elevates what is really, really terrible material. And, and he's fun and has a lot of, like, fun... A lot. He has several fun moments that I that I laughed at and enjoyed. And there was one specific scene that I thought End was list. just fantastic. Um, I don't know if you want to skip all the way, but it was it was the the final confrontation between Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor, uh, set to the Metallica song. As as you know, spoiler alert: uh, stabbing implements were being removed from the body and reinserted into the body. Time to the music, and I, I like as as much as I really disliked the film up to that point. I almost stood up and applauded because <laughs> it was so much fun. And I thought, man, if the whole movie was like this, that would have been really special. That 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 yeah. moment meant a lot. But then, but that the whole movie is that energy. It is. So it might have missed for you, but the whole if we're gonna defend the film in this part of it, like the movie is just having fun. There's two groups of people who would like this. It's it's like dudes who want to be this cool, who like aspire to be tough and super fucking cool, whether you're the hero or the bad guy. Like they're both cool in their own ways. Like they're both, you can both aspire to to be both of them, I should say. Uh, or, God, God or forbid girls, people are aspiring to be Conor McGregor's character, but yes, sure, sure. I, I, you know, there. Oh, you don't think a younger taken. you would want to be Conor McGregor in this film? No. What? What do I look like? Some kind of hack? <laughs> you fucking. You're such a liar. His entrance into the film made me think of you. Well, you of would when write I was that for yourself. Yeah. What? Yeah. When I was fourteen, that's, I that's would love a it. scene that you would write for you. You'd be like, listen, I'm coming in. Balls out. Like, yeah. I just made love to a woman. I'm gonna set this little hut on fire. <laughs> I'm gonna be cool. Like yeah, yeah, I'm, no. I don't give a shit. Like that's there are people who are just like, yes. Of course. It's this fun. is it's awesome. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. That the whole film is riddled with that type of energy. Just sure. fun, macho uh energy. Just charismatic, cool. I don't give a fuck about anyone because I'm so tough and so cool. So, like, but I won't criticize. Great. I won't be critical of the film for any of that stuff at all. I won't. I don't. My my. Dis that's the whole. F but no, that no, no. Is but the there's film. a way to execute that. That's not poorly executed. So the the machismo, ah. the energy, the vibes, the over the top nature of all of the violence and the action scenes. I I can let all that go. No part of me is like, oh, I could never get pick up by a boat and crash into another boat and land on the other boat and fly through the air and land on the roof. Like, no, that's what Roadhouse should be. As much as I, as many people, love the original Roadhouse, the original Roadhouse is stupid. Like, the, it may, the action yeah. is so it's stupid. It's a stupid movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but it's, it, it's fun and it's a great time and it's representative of its time and it's just, it's very real in a terribly unreal way. Well, I just, here's the thing, because you, you say it. Why is it okay for something to be representative of its time if it's in the 80s and not now? This movie is representative of this time. That's my whole sure, fucking argument again, with I'm this not and the about, gray man. I'm, I say the movie in the 80s is representative of its time in terms of like content and look and feel and energy. This movie today, we're saying, is representative of its time based on it having horrible effects and being really shittily made. <laughs> Like, that's a different thing. Like, oh, it's representative of its time because the quality is so poor. The quality of the one in the 80s for all of its over-the-top nonsense is, like, what, 10 times better than the quality of this film? Like, that that's where I'm taking issue. It's, it's different kinds of representation. What did you like about this movie, Keith? <laughs> I mean, that's, well, what I like about it is that it is uh, fun. The experience of me watching it at home it, this film would have been much better to see in theaters, and we can get to it. Oh, we'll get to it. But I just, it feels more like the, and, and I don't want to say an event, because it's not that big, but it just feels like it, it's, it's, this thing should have been enjoyed with big stars, big energy, big swagger, big set pieces. Like, it feels like a theater experience. For sure. That people would just gravitate towards. So I felt all that energy. Once I kind of stopped thinking about like, why doesn't he feel pain? <laughs> like, why doesn't he feel pain at all? Well, he's, he's a he's human tough. being. <laughs> yeah, like, 
Once you kind of get past all those things that I would love to get into, and the very poor writing, like, it's just, it's just a good time. It's just for dudes who want to feel cool and for chicks who are turned on by those type of dudes. <laughs> like, that's, that's who this movie is for, those two types of people. Yeah. Like, if you like Jake Gyllenhaal's abs, yeah, that's, what, that's what this movie is. That part's fun. I really liked the scene when he first stops the group of guys at the, at the bar the first time when he's slapping all of them and he's asking them if there's yeah. a hospital nearby and then he drives them to the hospital. Like, that whole sequence, I enjoyed yeah. a lot. And I was like, oh, I hope the whole movie's like this. This is, this is fun. But it, I, and I would say that it is. I don't know where you think it veers off. Oh, well, like that is what the movie is. Okay, here's my question. Okay, I want let's start. Let's start with the script. I think it's okay. the worst script in memory. I think this is the worst written film I can I can think of off the top of my head. Like actively worse than even some of the worst films we've discussed. Like yeah, like White Men Can't Jump last year, which is my worst film of the year. I, I don't remember being like, oh my God, this script is awful yeah. the way I did the, during Roadhouse. <laughs> it was the, the worst line of dialogue I think I've heard in recent memory came from this. Please share. And I'm going to misquote it. But Maybe it's, it's in that fight scene. That, <laughs> it, it's in that fight scene that you love so much, the final fight scene. Oh, okay. The final fight scene, the, the crescendo of your film. Oh, I know what you're going to say. He's banging his head on the piano. He goes, that piano is out of tune. Are you? Sounds good to me. Are you fucking kidding me? Sounds good to me. Are Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing that grinds my gears more. <laughs> you know what really grinds my gears? This Lindsay Lohan. Then, then witty banter during a fight. Let alone the climax of your film. I I just it, it removes it removes any sort of stakes any sort of weight, any sort of momentum that you're carrying of like, oh shit, who's gonna win? But if they take a little comedy break and they're just like, that kid, that's out of tune. Oh, well, sounds good to me. Let's keep fighting. Like it just, fuck you guys, yeah, wait, so fuck you. guys are like you. buddies now? <laughs> yeah, like we're just laugh. playing around and having fun, but I'm gonna stab you in the throat two minutes later. Like it yeah. just, it doesn't match. It 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 ruins the stakes. It ruins the momentum of it. Like I truly hate. It. I truly hate it. Not yeah. then. Maybe in maybe in that first fight when he's talking about the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you know that's, that's the thing. There's not really that that's, kind of energy in most of the other fights. Like some of the other fights are goofy and playful, sure. And, and, but like in a in a high stakes end of the movie fight to the death, it seems weird, literally weird choice. Yeah. To, to, I just I, I was like fuck you guys. Anyway, well, not not literally. Please, we'll come back to it. But no, like <laughs> I have, I, like yeah, all, most of that kind of dialogue to me was stupid. But that stuff wasn't even egregious. I like I really mean this sincerely. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic or just like this is the worst script ever because of all these stupid lines. There's a lot of stupid one linery lines. But the like the the exposition, the meat of this script is so poorly written that I, I mean I I genuinely mean that it sounds like something. I would have written when I was 17 and I was like taking my first crack at, you know, me and my buddies are making crappy little action movies with henchmen and hitmen and stuff and out in the, the parking lots around like the, 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 the information dialogue. It's like, here's a scene. The first scene when uh, Jessica Williams character, the club owner goes and approaches him in the parking lot. She says, so listen, I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. And he says, a roadhouse, huh? And she says, Hemingway used to drink there. You know, Ernest Hemingway. And he says, good for you. And she says, it's always been a rowdy place. People come to blow off steam, but lately it's been attracting the wrong clientele. I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. Lately it's been attracting the wrong clientele. I mean, one more, one more little, another conversation between the two of them. Again, these are probably the two most important characters that we should really care about their interactions. And this is where the quote unquote character development would be happening in scenes like this. Uh, he says, you got a beautiful spot here, Frankie. And she goes, you bet your ass it's beautiful. I mean, look at this. Imagine having to drink right there with someone special, you know? Hell, you could even get married here, divorced too. Then you can come back and drown your sorrows. I mean, it's a whole circle of life thing. And he goes, oh, that's one hell of a sales pitch. I mean, this is like not like, ha 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 ha, terrible. This is just bad. You know, like th this is 
bad writing. The last example I'll give, because this is like where you really see it, is the bad guy, uh, Billy M M Magnuson, or whatever that actor's name is, the son, the, the Connor's boss. The lines that he says to his henchmen, two examples. You're all supposed to have this job done by now. Okay. Uh, and then next one, this fucking bouncer is standing in the way of my dreams. He's fucking killing me. You're here laughing as everything I've been trying to build is going down the drain. Shit, you ready to do this? I'm gonna take this fool out. Like this is very amateur stuff. And I know this is very insulting to the people who wrote this film, but like, I'm sorry, I'm sure you guys are better than this, but you deserve the scorn for this. Like this is very bad. Very, very bad. D yeah. Defend it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote this movie. I, I ghost wrote it. Checks out. Checks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think your uh, performance is doing it any justice as you read it. Doing it more justice than a lot of these performers. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I knew I could hear you not liking. All of the performances except for Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. Yeah, I mean, Conor McGregor's performance is stupid. And, like, it, it goes on too long. Like, at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. But then he just never stops smiling. And it's like, oh, you, you got to, there's other speeds, Conor. <laughs> like, like you got to coach the, your guy to, I know no, he's a first-time no. actor, but, like, you don't always have to just resort to, it's like somebody told him, like, if you forget what you're saying, just smile again and be crazy. Like, uh, but yes, I think Jessica Williams' performance is truly awful. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I think she's funny. I've seen her in other things. This is bad. And then I think that little girl's performance, Charlie, is also really wooden. Like, local townsfolk send for a hero to help clean up the rowdy saloon. And, and bad. And those are supposed to be sort of your two emotional uh, centers here to help ground your, your lead, who's a little wild himself. So that's just another complaint, but that that goes to a deeper issue. But I don't want to just keep ranting here. I'd like, you know, what do you think the performances are all right? No, I just I'll let you do whatever. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I, feel, I got fired no, up. I'm, about I, no, I'm joking. I'm I'm joking. I think the performances are are fine. I think I the thing that I struggle with in terms of the performances is none of the groundwork is laid for me to give a shit about any of these people. So so it's so surface level. Like, it's chicken or the egg sort of thing. It's like, how good of a performance can you give without the material? No, for sure. You know, like, and then the material is, like, shitty, so you're giving shitty performances, but is there shitty performances or is it bad material? You know, like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. it, they, they work kind of in conjunction. The movie is just energy. Like, that. I, just, I keep coming back to it, and I'm sorry, but that's, it's as basic as a story, so much so that they fucking talk about it during the film, which was a little... Frustrating. Like, if you're gonna say, like, oh, this is just the old westerns. Yeah. <laughs> this is as cliche as those old westerns. Yeah. Well, then don't make that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. change that movie to make we it not. We can acknowledge how cheesy this is, so that makes it okay that it's so cheesy. That makes it's not okay to just do that. But yeah. that is the whole thing. It is just. It is something we've seen. I kept saying, like, into <laughs> my head, I was like, God, we really have seen this like so many times before, haven't we? And then I was like, yeah, it's a remake of a movie we've seen before. Yeah. Like, it's just the same shit recycled. So, I don't know. The performances are not, are, are not great. I think Gyllenhaal and, and uh, uh, Conor McGregor are, are fun. And I think that they, they I think they're, they're not chemistry. Physicality? The, the, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're opposites. They are literally polar oh. opposites. One's a nice guy, one's a psychopath. Yeah. And they, they play, the, you know, good versus evil. It plays well just naturally, not them two together. But, I, but know, just the idea I'll take the issue idea with that, too. They're both psychopaths. That's the other thing that you talk about, the, none of the character work is done. Like, what character are we, are we really supposed to connect with here? Like, I know it's Jake Gyllenhaal because he's the protagonist. He's framed that right. way. But really, yeah. what background do we have on him that would make us really like him? Other than he's, you know, like, he, he's, he's a fucking murderer who, like, lost his mind in the ring and killed a guy. And then, like, there's no real... What, did I miss anything more further in depth no. on that? Like, oh, was there any exploration? Was there any introspection on his part as to no. why he snapped? And how... And, and like, no. was he working through that issue and, and resolving this issue? Like, no. No. And that's what it should have... Like, yeah. that's what it's supposed to be <laughs> if you gave a shit about your, your story. 
Like, he kind of sucks. Like, he kind of sucks. And he, I know he's, like, fun, and he's our hero, so we like him. Yeah. But, like... And he's... Yeah, you see him be nice. Like, he's good to that girl. Yeah, he leaves the money. <laughs> you know... Uh, yeah, you know, he's nice, to, and he's generally a happy kind of guy. He drives those guys to the hospital. Like, can't be all that bad. He's not a Yeah, and he murderous. says at the end, too, in his self-aware thing, like, I'm not the hero in this story or whatever. And she goes, well, you're not the villain either. I got news for you. But it's like, well, then we need to learn more about him. <laughs> like, what, yeah, th- why someone are, needs you know, to be the hero, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, and if he's not the hero, and if, if he's supposed to be this kind of morally, you know, ambiguous character, then we need to learn more about that. Like, w- like... There's, there was no, yeah, like, his struggle. You're introducing a really dark, serious concept by like his past, his his origin story is that he killed a guy in the ring, and now he's just like a burnout, like like fucking bar fighter, homeless drifter. Like, okay, get, what is he working towards? <laughs> like, there there's really nothing. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, nothing. So I mean, all of that shit. Like, if you think about this film for one second, it it falls apart like immediately. Yeah. Immediately. It just doesn't add up to anything. And that might be the that might be the biggest problem is the underdevelopment of Jake Gyllenhaal. That that because why why do I want him to win other than the fact that you you don't want the bad guys to win? Yeah. Yeah. Like that can't be the driving force. Like, well, I hope those guys don't win. So go get them. You know, like that's that's a shitty position for the audience to be in. Yeah, it's just under thought. And I thought, too, as it compared to the original Roadhouse, where you're like, Patrick Swayze shows up, and there's, like, a lot of care given to, like, his backstory, but also, like, his ethos and what he's bringing to the the bouncers at that bar. Ask him to walk. Be nice. If he won't walk, walk him. But be nice. And, and like, the way he views the world is, is, like, you know, his philosophy is what he's helping imbue into these other characters that are all crazy, violent hicks or whatever. But in this one, there's really none of that. Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't really connect to anyone there, really, you know, except for, I guess, the little girl and her dad. Like, he... he well, he, and those other bouncers, like, well, yeah, it's, but that's it's so over. Lift with your legs. Oh, yeah, remember lift with your legs. Like, there's two yeah. scenes no, of he, that... He, he, he he casually taught that guy how not to get stabbed. Yeah. But like I fucking hated that shit yeah. so much. He, he just on a whim just be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that guy's got a knife. So what you want to do is just take a step back and you'll be fine." Okay. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Wow, it worked. Like yeah. there's no th- level of threat to that. You're going to die. Yeah. You're going to die. Like that's a yeah. There's no, and, but Nothing there's no matters. deeper lesson there either. Like yeah. the first one, there's yeah. a there's a deeper lesson of like this is why we do this. There, there's a there's a deeper meaning, if I may be so bold. And then also in this new one, that second bouncer that he goes to recruit, t- what is that guy gets 10 seconds of character development? Like, ah, you still hit the bag? Yeah, sometimes you're in. And now we're supposed to care you're about in. that guy. We're supposed to care about that mm. dynamic. Mm. We don't, you don't care about him. Like, mm. it, it's crazy. <laughs> so yes. Well, it, yeah, it should be. That that relationship should be more furthering of Gyllenhaal's character. Less about that. That character, I think, is just an added thing. You were supposed to. He should be teaching and for and, sure and for fostering sure. relationships and sh- showing his heart through these Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Like, you care. You learn more about him through those relationships than that character specifically. But you do not. But that's Absolutely. how it should have been used. Yeah, totally. And I would also say that so, like, yeah. there's really nobody else either because the Jessica Williams character, she's a liar. You know, like, yes. I don't understand any of, like, none of your main leads that are supposed to be your heroes are particularly good or likable. And and that only works if they're also, like, interesting. <laughs> you know, like, if there's, like, something going on behind the scenes that we can lean into. And, you know, people yes. love the Joker movie, and he's a fucking evil villain. Like, you can right. make a bad guy or a morally gray guy your hero. But, like, you have to give a purpose. And there's really no yes. purpose to any of these characters. Yes. Even Conor McGregor. Yeah. You know nothing. Oh, he's just nuts and he's goofy. It's like, I, yeah, I know we don't need to know yeah. his life story, but some, some motivation? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yes. <laughs> it's very poor. <laughs> and and yeah. while we're kind of talking adjacent here to the performances and the writing, this is Segway Kings, a, little, this is a triple deep segue. Uh, that first scene between where she, where Jessica Williams is recruiting him out in the, the bar parking lot, Monique and I were looking at each other like, 
what is this writing? What is this performance? Like, oh my God, this scene is so like bad, like so cheap. And it was just like, it sounds bad. Why is her delivery so stilted and awkward? And then throughout the film, there were moments where like, the music was really loud and I couldn't hear the dialogue, but it was like important dialogue. And then there was other scenes where the, the voice, like the tone of the voice seemed to shift and like volume. And, and, and I just thought like, oh my God, a quarter of the way through, I told, I told my wife, I said, this is like the worst audio mastering, like mixing and mastering I think I've ever heard. I don't know that I've ever noticed it to this degree in a film. Like I was just like, and so I think maybe these performances are not great and the writing is really poor and that's part of the why the performances are bad, but also it's one of those instances, like we recently watched the, the classic film Love Story and it was like the actress in that seems to be giving this really terrible performance most of the time, but you can tell the dubbing is bad. Like it's all ADR. At least I had the guts to admit what I felt. Someday you're gonna have to come up with the courage to admit you care. I care. So you're like, of course it's not gonna be great. It's on two different days. And so I started to think like, that's what happened here. There's a ton of this work as ADR. And as I started looking for it, it got more and more obvious. It kind of sounds like the plot to a Western. Like local townsfolk send for a hero to help clean up the rowdy saloon. So I think that's a huge problem. And then I read, we don't have to get into all this just yet, but like there is a lawsuit happening against this film by the original writer of Roadhouse back in the 80s. And as a part of that lawsuit, he alleges that during the strike, Amazon used AI generative technology to fill in some of the voices of the actors. Oh, wow. And Amazon is alleged, they wholeheartedly deny it. But like, I thought, wow. I, I read that after we watched the movie and I was like, why is the audio this bad? Why does this sound so horrible? And so, you know, maybe he was picking up on something that was a bad mix. He's like, here's something I can accuse them of. But like, it rang true enough to me that I was like, this, the audio is a problem. Yeah, I, it didn't, it didn't jump out to me in the way that it did to you. I'd have to w li watch it slash listen to it again to, to weigh in on it as passionately as you did. But I believe you. And that's really interesting about the, the AI stuff. I mean, what a nightmare that would be. <laughs> what a, like, I mean, that's, I mean, obviously that's where we, a lot of us fear that we're headed, but that, that would like, it checks out to me and that like makes maybe yeah. again even just the potential of that made me hate this movie but all the more for adr work like i can totally see like rather than paying a list celebrity to come oh, yeah. back in for a day That's like a i can problem. totally see That's i'm not problem. saying it's right i'm not i'm not agreeing with it yeah but i can see under the radar shady shit of where course. it's like we just need one line we, we need two lines we just need oh yeah. make them say it a little faster a little slow like whatever exactly yeah you could easily, easily do it and maybe get away and probably probably get away with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. When people aren't holding these people to standards, <laughs> that, that's what happens. I, I was really confused about the scene. Like, I know it's another thing. It's a stupid movie. But, like, when Conor McGregor shows up with a group of dudes to start, like, oh, we're really going to mess this place up now. Uh, and they start destroying the bar. He starts, like, dancing around with the golf club and all this shit. He's, then he starts a little fight. And then just some random patron, I think, yells, bar fight, and turns around and like punches another random guy. And then everyone in the bar just starts swinging on each other. Like, what, did I miss something? Because yeah, like, that's not real life. <laughs> and it's, and it's so. Well, none of this is real I know, life. But like, that's like cause and effect. There's nothing there. Have you ever been in a bar and somebody gets in a fight and everyone's like, can't wait. Let's fucking riot. Like, that's so stupid. Well, that's, that's the nature of this. It's got, Jessica Williams told him in the beginning of the film that so the wrong, wrong crowd has gotten into the bar. Yeah, but we see a bunch the of tourists in there so, that are like, hey, break it up. And then that whole time, so the whole, everyone in that building starts fighting. And they're tearing, they're, they're literally swinging from the roof. Uh, and Jake Gyllenhaal just sits there and sips his drink. And this is already after he's established as like, the, he works there. And, and Conor McGregor's like beaten, like, he sits there for the longest time until Conor McGregor starts yelling his name. What the fuck? We're supposed to we supposed to like this character? This character is a hero? No, nope, he's he's an anti-hero. He's begrudgingly doing this. Great. Really, really top level guy that I'm rooting for in this. Like it's like, what do you get up <laughs> and do know, something, why, man? Why does he try and kill himself? I just, why, I don't know. <laughs> it sucks. 
the CGI fighting was really oh the CGI uh, in general b- bothering me. The the punching though specifically, like it really did take me out. They tried to add like a lot of oomph to the to the fighting, yeah, and it it was so like so unnaturally. Yeah, it's like digital. Like it looks so unnatural. <laughs> it's like digital crash zooms in the middle of a fight. It's like that. Yeah, that's not like a fight. A fight doesn't need CGI. Like so much stuff you can argue does. And I know I'm I'm the broken record of like Jackie Chan and shit. But like go watch a Jackie Chan movie from 1987, and you're gonna be so much more impressed and excited and thrilled than this. It, it looked like it. It looked. It reminded me of. Do you remember you people? The the, the first Where, half that I watched. Uh, <laughs> the end of the movie, Jonah Hill, and I forget the woman's name, uh, Nipsey Hussle's ex-wife or whatever. I, for, I forget he knows, her name. He's got, he's got street cred. <laughs> but they never kiss, like in the in the filming, they do not kiss. They just added the kiss in digitally. Yeah, that's nuts. That's what I felt like they did with every punch. Yeah. That they're like, just get like close and we'll just... Extend his yeah, arm, yeah, totally. or make it, and they did these kind of like weird speed ramps where it looked like unnaturally fast, yeah. and so it's like and whip people's head more and like, like to increase impact. Yeah. But it looked so unnatural yeah. to me. I was like, "What is happening?" Yeah, I did not. Appre- I did not appreciate. It takes that. all the excitement away from me. Is like the irony is they think I think they think like, "Oh, this makes it more exciting." It's raw. It's rugged. Yeah. It's like it's not raw. It's the opposite of raw. Like it's so digitized and staged and fake. And unrealistic, like a fight scene is is compelling because of its realness, you know. Be- and and or if it's a spectacular fight scene, it's compelling because you're like, oh my god, your jaw's on the floor. How did he, how did he do that? I can't believe some they did that. That what a crazy scene. None of that is here. And then the CGI, like in that truck crash on the bridge, especially, is like, the, I know I'm the broken record, but like that stuff is just evidence of them not caring. Because I've said that about other films, but no one watched this final cut and was like, looks really good. That that scene on the bridge looks really good, guys. Print it. Like, no, they were just like, eh, good enough. And and you're never going to get me to be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Good enough is, is fine. What if they did like it? I just had a curiosity. What if, what if they were like, no, this is good. I think it's more insulting of them to assume they liked it. Like, genuinely. Like, if they liked it, like, if we're, if we're like, oh, no, I'm sure they liked it, that means... That, that's a bigger fuck you to if I was them. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, so you think I don't know shit? Like, you think I'm an idiot? Because you'd have to be an idiot to, to think that that was, like, really well done. And so I, I don't think these people are idiots. Doug Liman has made uh, pretty, good, pretty good movies in the past. He has a, he has a wide variety of films, um, which is another great segue into the wider issue at hand here. So how familiar are you with the, the distribution drama around this film? No, I know I know nothing about any of this. I've seen a lot of promo for it. Yeah. And, and I know of the first film, and that's about it. So the, the short of it is the director, Doug Lyman, um, he's done The Born Identity and Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Edge of Tomorrow and several other, you know, lar- large movies. He had started production. I think they started production on this, you know, several years ago. And in the time that production was kind of underway or pre-production or what have you was kind of underway, uh, it was with MGM. Amazon bought MGM. And so to hear Doug Lyman say it now, he was really disheartened that it became a streaming film because he says he was hired and signed up to make a theatrical release big film. And so in the lead up to this film's premiere at the South by Southwest Film Festival, he released an open letter Uh, I think a couple of months ago, and it was quite scathing of Amazon Studios uh, and was saying like, you know, Amazon is not the place to go for creators. They've totally hung me out to dry. I'm going to be boycotting the premiere of this film. This film is incredible. It's all this great things. It deserves to have a theatrical release. Amazon doesn't care about that. They lied to me. They misled me. Fuck them in so many words. Yeah. And I remember I, I saw that letter and I was like, yeah, like, all right. Yeah. You know? Well, can I can I jump in? Because yeah, yeah. that I said this at the top of the episode. I agree. I, in watching this movie, I, I truly felt that whatever good uh, elements of this film exist would be better on the big screen, uh, in front of a packed crowd on an opening night kind of uh, uh, vibe. Yeah. Like it, it would just be. It would it would make a an average film a little bit better that ambiance, that feel 
to it. Do you do you agree or disagree with me and Mr. Lyman? Uh, no, no, I agree. I mean, I always want films like I'm I'm almost past the point of wanting any any actual film to go to streaming first. Like, I, I, to me, it's it, they are just made for TV movies now. Like the the quality, the the overall like the effort, everything is so much less as a very general statement uh, across the board. That yes, it would have been much better as a theatrical exper experience. Um, but also that makes them elevate their quality too. So I think like, so he wrote this letter and it came out against it. I'm going to boycott it. And then I read that he actually ended up going. So he went to the, the premiere and after he said he was going to boycott it. Um, they probably paid him a lot of money perhaps. to do that. But in that letter, he was so like over the top praising the film. And I understand to an extent you feel like you have to do that. It's your work. The guy that directed Red Notice said, this is my best movie, which, I mean, no offense to that guy, the bar is low, uh, so maybe it was. But, like, I know they have to believe that, uh, especially when they're doing press for it. But his praise was so over the top, like, this is a career-defining role for Jake Gyllenhaal. It needs to be theatrical release so he can be in awards contention for it to be recognized for this incredible role. This film is going to change the way that, you know, action movies are perceived, the state-of-the-art, groundbreaking fight sequences. Like, this is just incredible. This is such a, a so much bullshit that it's going straight to streaming. And I was just like, okay, I, I kind of, like I said earlier, I don't think Doug Lyman really believes that. Like, I think he's he's hamming it up a little bit. He's taking this opportunity to write this open letter to also like pump up his movie. But then the thought crossed my mind because I read a couple of things. One, I read that Amazon approached him early after their acquisition of MGM and said, look, you can make this film. This is according to Variety. He was told you can make this film for 60 million and you'll get a theatrical release or you can make it for 85 and it'll go straight to streaming. And he took the money. He said, we'll make it for 85 and it can go straight to streaming. And, and then, so I started to think, cynic that I may be, was like, maybe that open letter was all just a marketing ploy. Maybe he's saying- Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's all, it's, it's, I can't believe they would do this just to pump up, to overinflate the quality in the, the public's eyes. Like, oh, this movie must be great. This guy's taking a torch to Amazon over it. He says yeah. it's incredible, yeah. you gotta see it. But uh, not only that, but to cause drama. Yeah. That's like, it's a conversation piece. Like, granted, it didn't get to me, but I guarantee, this movie was heavily marketed. That's, that's what I just said a minute ago. Yeah. Like, th this movie was marketed. I've seen it a lot, and I've seen it for a while. So I would not be surprised if that's part of the, the press run. Yeah. It's like, we need some drama about that. We need people talking about this, good, bad, and different. Like, so when it does come out, that they, oh, I know, I heard about this. Yeah. Let me check this out. I heard there was some beef on the set. Let's see how good it really yeah. is. I think it's more about the drama than it is like hyping up how good it is. Well, I think it's both. I think that's I think part it's of, it. of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's part of it, but I just think, hey, create controversy around the film. Yeah, people are gonna wanna check it out. And so that really yeah. irritated me too, along with like a, that, that lawsuit I mentioned from one of the original writers who claims several things, but the AI voice generation as a part of it, uh, you know, against the, during the strike, who knows if that's true or not. But it really just like soured the whole thing in my mouth because I think all the time too, just about streaming in general and just really shortly here, like what my fuse is kind of at its end about like, I read something recently or saw something recently about how studios like Netflix or Amazon or any of these major streamers, we wonder how, why these big films that they make and that they fund can be worth it for them, right? Like you hear about Netflix putting 200 million into some, uh, like The Gray yeah. Man, for example. They put 250 million yeah. into that movie uh, and then they're not, no theatrical release. Where are they making the money? Just from, you know, subscriptions, from data? Subscriptions. Maybe, sure. But it's not even about making money. It's about them being willing to take a loss because it's helping kill theaters. Because if they didn't fund The Gray Man, a studio would, and they'd release it theatrically, and then that's competition for people for people's eyeballs. So if people are at the theater, mm. they're not on your platform. So it's worth it to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on several strategic large films because you're basically just killing them. And, th yeah. and then that would that that makes sense why the quality is not great, because there's no real high standard there, because it's not important that it's good. It's important that it's not yeah. being made well by someone else. And like Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy. That's crazy to think about. That's crazy to think about. And maybe true. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can sure. 
Because when you think about Netflix is profitable, I think Netflix is the only one that is profitable out of all of these streamers. Uh, so Netflix has money to burn, and Apple certainly has money well, to burn Amazon because too, they don't but give just a shit not their about their film aspect. A Exactly, but a Amazon as a company, app, that's what I was gonna say, Apple as a company, they're not making money off their streamer, yeah. they're making money off their phones, their computers, they're like that's the real cash cow. Yeah. So they're like, sure, we'll, we'll piss away, it doesn't matter to them. Well, and you're getting the data, because if you, if you keep people on your platform, you're getting data that you're then selling. So like that's the real yeah. currency here. And so I, I'm at the, the point, I know this is dramatic, and, and as filmmakers ourselves who are like, who are just shopping around a film, <laughs> right now we gotta be careful. Uh, hey guys, uh, by the way, I, I love you. I'm not talking about us. We really to wanna sell out and be on your platforms, please. We, have, like, we have a... I'm, I'm starting to look at like everyone involved with producing streaming films in particular, not shows or series necessarily, but films as like you're, you're hastening our own demise. Yeah. I... Yeah, it's hopeless. I, I don't know. It's hopeless. I, I, I don't have an answer for you. It is, it is hopeless. Be, uh, the, the, what you're saying only makes me think, do you think that movies were always only focused on money? Because that's the, that's the problem, right, in my, in my opinion. The problem is we're trying to make too much money. And, and we're, we're boiling things down to say, like, what are the, how do I guarantee return on my investment. And that's what leads to poor shitty films because the art is dying. The art is dying because we only care about the bottom line. So, but do you think that's now or is that always and now we just know it? I think the difference is it's always been the money is the driver for sure. But yeah. at least back in the day, the money was being made and managed by people who had some interest in <laughs> the filmmaking industry, which lended itself to making good films. You have to make good films. You have to make a good product to get people to come see your product and make that money that you so desperately want. The difference now is the films are being financed and made by companies that have no interest in making good films because they're not film companies. They are shopping companies and phone and computer companies and data mining companies. Like that's the difference is now it's just so much colder and strate more strategic in the way that they're gonna make that money because the money is not made by Roadhouse Views, it's made, and to quote Doug Lyman in his letter, by selling toasters and putting the Roadhouse ad right next to it. Like, and to linking one thing. Oh, Roadhouse is over, buy this toaster. Like, that's where the money is made. So I think that's the difference now. And it's sad. And it is hopeless. <laughs> yeah. But we don't have to roll over. I don't know, I like free shipping. 